I just want to be considered one of the best to do this ever. <laughs> Coming up on another app, I sit down once again with Laurel Howry and we talk about his comedy, his trajectory, and his plan to dominate in Hollywood. Laurel, so you're just trying to get all the money. Um, I see. And and I say that, I say that jokingly, of course, I'm glad you laughed because I feel like every other day I'm seeing another headline of you starring in, or, and this is new, I think, producing a project. Tell me a little bit about this Laurel dominance that, that we're all starting to see right now. Yeah, I guess it's like, for me, some of it has been brewing with me for the last few years. And just, you know, it's one of those things, you know how I go in Hollywood, like you already doing stuff and then people find out later, but it's like, yeah, I've been you know, trying to do this. Uh, but it's really being inspired by Issa, uh, Tiffany Haddish, Ava, like they're doing some really boss things and creating opportunities for people. So, you know, a lot of the stuff, you know, they asked me to star in now. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll do it, but I want to produce it. I don't want to say credit. I would like to be involved in casting and everything else because I feel like when I have my hand kind of in something, it, it comes out really, really good. And that's that's actually from working with Ryan Reynolds and watching how he moved with Free Guy. I was so mm-hmm. fascinated by it and impressed, actually. At what point did you start to say you wanted a stake in the projects that you were in? Well, you know, something with me is... I'm a chill guy. So nobody knows that's how I've moved the whole time. And it mm-hmm. started in stand up. Like when I start dealing with promoters and I just started doing my own shows, I'm like, wow, I gotta wait on this dude to pay me. I need to fit. It's more or less a business thing at first for me, right? And like the first mm-hmm. series I was on Friends of the People, we I started it and produced it, right? So mm-hmm. I've always kind of done it. What I didn't understand was the business for real of Hollywood. Ava DuVernay, I'll never forget invited me to a Ray and we just talked and she just put me on game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's, I, I mentioned, and I mentioned them for a very, for, I can't believe she was telling me this stuff. One of the fascinating mm-hmm. things she said to me was like, well, I try to tell some of these other dudes and they don't listen. Thank you for listening. Because I, and she was just putting me on game. I'm like, why wouldn't I listen to you? It's just, you gotta be, I, I just feel like we just gotta have our own stake. That's the only way we're going to be able to tell our stories the way we want to. And you look yeah. at what Macro is doing. That's why, to me, Judas and the Black Messiah is so good. Is because I don't know what it would have been if it would have been in the wrong hands, you know. Yeah. And so that's where we at with it now. And I think now we're all starting to have these very honest conversations with each other on how to keep this going forward, man. And it's it's really amazing to see what Lena and all oh, everybody's doing. with have all this different stuff on different networks. So you know, it's it's very fascinating. But I wanted to be a part of it just because. I'm so comfortably black. I don't, I'm not afraid to ruffle any feathers if I have to. And that's why I I need to be in the boss position. You know, I know that there's this running joke of sorts about the idea of, of overnight success. That's clearly not the case here. Even though you do have this amplified, amplified and almost ubiquitous presence right now, let's talk about your journey. Like, where were you in your career when you knew that this was going to stick? Was it a role? Was it a phone call, a meeting? Like, what was it for you? One of the biggest ones to me was when I booked the Eleven Color reboot. Mm. And Karen Ivy Wayne's hand picked me. Mm. That's when I knew everything was about to change. When we started shooting that pilot, I would come in from set and it'd be agents just sitting there waiting to meet me. Feel like a basketball recruit. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, this is, oh, okay, this is what it is. And then once you get a taste, I'm one of those people, once you get a, you know, it's like Michael Jordan, right? Michael Jordan, once he won a championship, you weren't going to beat that brother in the finals. Like once he figured out if that, and that's been my mindset. Like once you let me in, all right, it's a wrap. Once I understand something, okay, now I'm about to level up with that. So like that, that really was the moment being handpicked by one of my heroes. And, mm-hmm. and it was such a surreal, th- I wrote a show called Name Your Adventure that used to come on NBC, hosted mm-hmm. by my man, uh, the play A.C. Slater. And I wrote them, said, I would like to meet Ken and Ivy Wayans and be on the set of The Living Color. I was 10 years old. Wow. But they canceled the show. This is a true story, right? Yeah. They stuck their letter said, we're sorry, we, we can't do your adventure because the show is canceled. <laughs> but that's how far back I was, like, yo, I want to meet Ken and Ivy Wayans. And when I remember telling them that and I first meet him, I'm like, bro, you, you wouldn't, like, before we start this, can I tell you this is 
this is a this is surreal to me. I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe you know who I am. I can't believe you handpicked me and you love my material. And you know, that brother know who a star is. Mm. So I don't remember him telling me that. Like, cause I was like kind of nervous about something. He's like, dude, you, you're gonna be okay. You believe I don't I look at my resume, brother. I've picked some really dope people. <laughs> <laughs> a couple a couple of marquee names yeah <laughs> to say the very least <laughs> that's such a great story and I love that you shared that with me at what point did you feel like people started seeing you because that in living color reboot unfortunately didn't didn't stick Never around happened. as long as it should have yeah yeah it was like it was talked about everyone was excited about it and then it didn't but at what point did you feel like everyone else started seeing you and paying attention that's a great question, right? Because I did a couple of things. Like I had a series called Friends of the People that we did on True TV, which was, man, so much fun. I think we did it brilliantly, but it was on True TV. So it didn't get the eyes that it did, right? And then, you know, I was on Carmichael's show. And, you know, you know, people, but it really wasn't until Get Out, Get Out changed my life. Jordan mm-hmm. Peele told me it would. I, he was still editing the movie. He called me. He was like, look, uh, you better know what num- what your numbers are, bro. I said, what that's supposed to mean? He's like, you'll see. Wait till this wow. movie. And I was like, all right. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, but that's what he said to me. And it was very, it's very, even with Get Out, like, the, I don't, I remember when I booked it, I, <laughs> I went in for my uh, call back and me and Jordan was there and we did this, the original ending. That's what we did. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'm outside because it's an emotional, the original was very emotional and whatever. And I'm like trying to get back into a normal space. And then he comes out there and he's like, look, I ain't supposed to tell you this. And I got to look at three more people, but this is yours if you if you want. And I remember him telling me that and I'm trying to be cool. Like, oh, thanks, man. And I end up just walking. I don't even, I, I don't know how, I ended up, I probably walked for about an hour. You know what's crazy? I didn't even know what this movie was going to do. It was just some in here that felt really game changery. I always tell people either people's gonna hate this or love it. it was, I don't know if there's no in between. Mm. And what it ended up doing with that group of people was one of the most beautiful moments I, I've ever experienced. So, like, get out really, it changed the game. What I love so much about your role in Free Guy is that it almost feels like a wink and a nod to get out in some ways. Did it feel like that to you? I mean, and you probably know specifically which scene I'm thinking of where I was like, he clearly is the BFF of the world again. Um, And, and, and free guy. Did you feel that kind of uh, that correlation? Well, you know, some, yeah, no. Right. I think because the the difference is, I think the buddy, and this is what I love about, I always tell people like, you keep playing the best friend, but I'm like, cause it's different types of friends. Everybody got a friend. Like I'm going to be somebody's friend or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as long as people are in the movies, it's going to be a friend. Like, um, but what I love about the f- type of friends I've played so far, especially Buddy, Buddy has this innocence to him because he was, a, he was created. Buddy, if we're not real, doesn't that mean that nothing you do matters? I am sitting here with my best friend trying to help him get through a tough time. Now, if that's not real, I don't know what is. He was created to only be this guy's best friend. That is what they did. That's what they made him into. And with Buddy was like, I, hey, whatever you're saying is whatever. I am your best friend. And that's all I care about. And I love his innocence, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, cause look, Rod and Get Out, Rod was, Rod was a little crazy, right? He was just a little, <laughs> you know what I mean? He was a little, he was like, he was very investigative. He wanted to know what was going on. You know, he's different. But with Buddy, mm. Buddy kind of had a more innocence to him. Like, hey, man, I don't know. It was like my favorite line I say that, you know, you'll see it on, you see it on the trailers and stuff. Like, I don't even know what's happening right now, but I love it. That is yeah. Buddy. He, yeah. he, he trusts Guy that is his best friend. And that's just what it is. We all relate to Buddy. And I really, uh, I really love seeing you in that role. What made this right for you? What made you say yes? Ryan Reynolds. You should definitely go. (laughs) Is that a Glock in your pocket? No. What? It's two Glocks. Oh. I'm a huge Ryan Reynolds fan, and yeah. I'm a huge on my bucket list for somebody I wanted to work with. I, and I'm being straight up, I, like, you know, I know people say that, like, no, no, no. 
I am a real Ryan Reynolds fan. I don't suppose this thing can fly. <laughs> no. Jump. That's my guy. That's who, who it is. So, like, even the first day, I remember I was fumbling through my lines. I couldn't remember what I was supposed to say because I was watching him. So I was fanning out, watching the brother act, and I was like, oh, I was supposed to say something, too. I was just like, what? Because it was like, oh, I'm watching this in person. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> 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 so like that's what, and then the heart of the movie is what I fell in love with Free Guy. What excites you right now? Um, well, a lot of things. I, you know, once again, I, I, you, you hear me nerd now. Um, you know, what's been leveling up excited is my son, Judah, who's, he's an actor, too, and we do, I've been literally working on a Disney cartoon Eureka together. He's on there. And I remember we was doing an episode and he was doing his song and stuff. And I'm just like, watched him like, whoa. Mm. I, it, it's something about seeing your, seeing your seed blossom from, you know, I didn't know anybody that did this. Yeah. So he has the freedom to just do it. And I was just sitting there like, yo, this is how you create generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And it was just watching. It was so weird because I'm watching him do his thing and I'm like trying not to tear up. I'd be I'm so sensitive sometimes. And I would just, because it was just like, yo, look at this. Wow. Because I didn't have that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They didn't know what to do with me. I, like I was cre as creative as I was, they like, brother boy, would you go to bed or like, you know, <laughs> they didn't know what to do with that. Right. And yeah. but this is different now. And I thought that was really, really fascinating to me. I was just watching him do his thing and just be professional. And it's like, wow, okay, this, this is cool. And it's not for us. He want to do it. I'm like, bro, you want to do this? I'm like, all right. And he just started booking stuff. Uh, Laurel, it is always great talking to you and truly been such a treat watching your career evolve. And uh, Free Guy is the hardest I've laughed in a, a year and a half. So thank you for that treat, too. <laughs> really great film. Thanks, Laurel. Thank you so much, Kelly. I appreciate you.